Welcome to our respiratory physical assessment lesson. You can find this on pages 16 and 17 of your nurse workbook 2.0, or you can go ahead and print the page below this video so you can fill it out with me or come back and refill it out so you can test your knowledge. The respiratory assessment is gonna be the most important assessment that we do in our patients, and we're gonna be constantly re-evaluating this. But as we're gonna stick with our theme that we wanna keep this systematic approach going when we're assessing our patients, we wanna stick with something first, our ABCs, this airway, breathing, circulation. So airway and breathing are the same thing, right? Well, not necessarily, because our airway is gonna be the air that's coming through the airway. If we have something obstructed or a blockage here, we can't do this breathing, what's going on inside our lungs. We're gonna go into so much detail about this in our respiratory module. However, we need to understand how to do this detailed respiratory assessment on our patient. So our patient has walked into triage, or our patient is walking into our room and we're watching them doing this across the room survey or from the door survey and we're gathering so much information. This patient is walking slowly. They are making breath noises as they're walking and when they go to sit on the bed, they are hunched over and having a difficult time breathing. So we just gathered a lot of information right there, seeing that they're short of breath and that something is going on. We want to get them out of whatever they're wearing because we're gonna do that first thing, our inspection, and we wanna look at this chest and thoracic area. So let's get into this inspection. We're gonna look at this chest movement and is the rise and fall while they're breathing symmetrical? Are both sides equally expanding and contracting during their breaths? We also are gonna be looking at the skin color and is the skin pink and the cap refill is less than three seconds? Meaning if I were to push on my patient's skin, no matter where it is, is it turning white? And then when I lift up, it's going to be that quick flash of white and into pink again in under three seconds. This is our capillary refill. If we see it take a long period of time, this is telling us that our tissue isn't getting that good venous blood flow. And if we see any kind of dusky blue cyanosis or gray going on on our body and this overall skin tone, this is a very late sign that something is going on. And what is the shape and structure we're looking at? And are there any dents or bulges, any lacerations, even scarring? As some patients could have a chest tube in the past, maybe some lung cancer removal, potential breaks, fractures, or deformities in their chest wall. So now that we inspected, we're going to move into palpation. So we're gonna be going more invasive. We wanna feel this thoracic area. So we're gonna feel this chest wall. And is there symmetry on both sides? Are we feeling any tenderness or masses? Are there any talking vibrations that are consistent? Are you putting your hands on their chest wall and their sides of their ribs and when they speak, you feel that vibration really strong on one side, but it feels very dull on the other side. So that symmetry is always going to be a continuous theme. So there's a technique known as the 99 method. And what this is, is cupping one of your hands, placing it to the area of their chest, and you're gonna have your patient say, 99, 99, 99. And as you go through the locations that we're about to go over, you should feel the symmetry of these vibrations within the chest. If you put your hand here and you start talking to yourself, you already can feel these vibrations in your hand. And the other percussive method is going to be tapping your own fingers. And this is a method where we're gonna use our two fingers and our other hand, and we're gonna actually tap this middle finger. We can give two taps. You wanna make sure that you're not putting these fingers on the rib necessarily, but you're putting it in the intercostal space. So the area right here, this intercostal space, is the space in between the rib. So we're gonna tap that middle finger and we're gonna to listen to that percussiveness, that vibration and the feeling and sensation you're gonna get in your fingers. As you do this over time, you'll start noticing if things don't feel symmetric, but also what's feeling more hollow and what isn't. So let's talk about these locations of our percussion and where we're about to auscultate using our stethoscope. In the anterior side of our chest or front side of our chest, there's multiple spots that we're going to listen to so we can listen to all the lobes of the lungs. 
So as you can see, these numbers were going from left to right, right to left. It really doesn't matter how you want to do this if you want to listen to one side or the other side. But again, the focus of doing this is so you're listening to constant symmetry. So when you're listening to the upper lobe, you're comparing it to this lobe. When you move it down and you listen to this lobe, you're comparing it to your other side. And posteriorly, we usually can listen to one lung straight down and then the other one as well. But again, this is really however you want to do this, but you want to keep that systematic approach so this becomes so ingrained in your head, you don't even think about it. So when we do our auscultation, this is listening. We're gonna be listening to our patient's lungs and we're gonna be following those numbers we just looked at. So we can place our stethoscope at these number references and listen to the inhale and exhale at each site. We're listening on both lungs and all of our lobes. And truly, we're listening to hear clear lung sounds, but if we don't hear clear lung sounds, are we hearing any wheezing, crackling, rails, muffled sounds, or even silent breath sounds? So again, we want to listen to these lung sounds from left to right to compare that symmetry. And we can do this bilaterally while moving down the thoracic region. And as everything we're going to do through these lessons and modules, we're going to always go over our anatomy because when we understand our anatomy, it helps us understand all these conditions as a whole. You're welcome to pause this video and you can fill it out yourself or you can go ahead and play this video once you're done so you can not only see the answers but learn a little bit about these anatomy areas. First we have this jugular notch and it might seem like it's unimportant but this is actually an important anatomical location. So we use this as a reference point when we measure our CVP, our central venous pressure. We're gonna talk so much about this CVP in our cardiac lesson, but the other part about this notch is that it can help us look for symmetry. It helps us understand if we see any abnormalities on either side of our chest. Next is our clavicular notch. So this is an attachment point for our clavicles and what we know as collarbones. We have our manubrium, and this is a prominent bone that forms the uppermost part of the sternum or the breastbone, and this is situated between those clavicles. Our sternal angle is going to be where the manubrium and the sternal body meet. And our epiphyseal joint is right above the xiphoid process. So this is a small cartilage joint that's located at this lower part of the sternum where the body of the sternum meets the xiphoid process. So these are actually the spots where we're going to do our CPR. So when we're sliding our hand across the chest, we're looking for that little notch right there that's going to give us the best access point for our compressions. So yes, we have to break some ribs, but we can access that heart and give it a good squeeze. And all of these right here are going to make up our sternum. And these ribs one through seven are going to be known as our true ribs and our ribs eight through 12 are known as our false ribs. And these ribs 11 and 12 are known as our floating ribs since they don't have an attachment piece on both ends. And in between these ribs is known as the intercostal space. And when we think about intercostal space, we wanna actually think about the space that's below the number we're referencing. So if we're talking about our third intercostal space, we're gonna count down to our third rib, and we're talking about the space between the third and the fourth rib. This concludes our respiratory assessment lesson. I'll see you in the next one.